Artist Doug Pexa here. Welcome back. This is part two of the ugly painting. Part one was last episode, and hopefully part three will be next or the one after. This is a series of a specific painting I got for a commission, and um, I just kind of talked in the first episode on how every painting has an ugly stage. And don't worry, because you can get that fixed up all right and dandy. So this is this episode, I'll show you how we move from that ugly painting stage to something a little more refined, locking in, building layers from the first sitting of this painting, and then really enhancing some spots. And uh, yeah. So, starting out with uh, just showing you a little bit of what the still life I set up for this. It's just really quick. It's a little out of focus. I'm sorry about that. But you get the idea. And uh, let's just do this, okay? So I set up this nice little still life. Spent quite a bit of time. I should have probably filled you in my thought process on setting up this still life, but I didn't, so here it is. A little behind, a little behind the scenes here, because not everything is perfect height. So, you can see coasters, lens caps, and just other random things to kind of prop prop things up because you can cheat in art. You really can. Actually, I kind of like it at this angle too. However, we're not doing it. And for some people who've been watching me for a while, I painted the studio this beautiful color, Mountain Mouse. It's awesome. I love it in here. All right, let's get painting. Welcome to the voiceover. I'm glad you made it this far. We are piggybacking on episode one, which we talked about the ugly painting stage. And yes, the painting, first layers, just blocking in uh, color, usually mid-tones um, is what I do. Uh, other artists will, will do different things and it's always your preference. Here, uh, moving forward, uh, this is a dry canvas again. Moving to just block in a second layer of colors, I am using linseed oil to achieve a thinner paint to build layers. And, and what happens here is the light will penetrate the painting in la the layers that you put on and it will give it a slightly glowy type essence. And I'm putting in some areas a little bit more meaty paint also uh, with, again, linseed oil in it. There might be a little shine in the background here, but that is the nature of the beast using mediums. And I'll get into medium uses like linseed oil, stand oil, and uh, some of those other fun things that you see in the art store and probably don't know what they are. So stick around for that. I really want this background to turn a very dark, receding type of space, the negative space there. Always pay attention to your negative space because that is as important, if not more important, than the subjects you're painting because if it's just slapped up there without any or much regard, it looks stupid. Looking for objects to start pushing into a more realistic view, as in highlights and shadows, starting to round some of that fruit up and starting to define that little, it's a creamer basically. So we're, we're looking to really start to define those shapes, correct those shapes, and it's easier to do when dry and build layers on top using kind of a meteor paint just so you can really see the edges and you're not seeing 
maybe the background that wasn't quite right or what have you. Also, jumping around the painting is a very important thing to do while painting. You want to take some of those colors, the same kind of whites, and use them in from the, the creamer to the bowl to uh, the highlights on the table maybe even. Adding that peach color from the peach into the background onto the fabric. Building color harmony helps create a, a unified piece of artwork, especially if you don't want a very graphic-y looking piece. These colors, as you, if you look at the still life or if you look at anything around, you'll see reflecting colors going back onto other objects. These reflective colors are a little more subtle, but as I said earlier, you can cheat in art and enhance some of that. The oranges, they will and are getting a little light blue in the shadow as reflective light from the bowl. And that little hint of blue, which is also a complementary color to orange, really sells the roundness of the uh, little oranges, uh, tangerines, or whatever uh, whatever they were. You also see working into the cups and the, the ovalness. And that's probably a, a something we should talk about sometime soon. It's how to make the roundness in space, which turns into an oval, how to make that realistic. There's some techniques, some things you can practice, We'll get into that in another video though. As you can see, building and building the layers here to a point. Things are not all working yet in this painting. In episode three of this little mini series, we'll get into some hard decisions to make, even though you like some things. As you can see, the knife is coming along real nice and some of the other elements are just feeling right but they don't feel cohesive and realistic even though again this is a more painterly I'm not trying to make a photograph out of paint I'm trying to make a painting look and feel right in an impressionistic sort of way but again I'm building up these these gooey layers with linseed oil and sometimes it has to sometimes you have to stop and let the painting breathe again. Let it dry so you can go back in and find the errors. Let it live in your studio, put it on the wall, put it on a bookcase, turn it upside down even. You can see so many mistakes if you just turn the painting around and you're like, oh, that's wrong or that doesn't look right. This painting is gonna be sitting again on my shelf. Technically it's done and hanging on somebody's wall, but <laughs> that's a whole nother story. And uh, these are some of the thoughts that I had right after finishing this painting session with this specific painting. So, I'm thinking I'm losing my light here, but uh, I'm thinking I'm at a point where I want to let this guy dry a little bit, um, go back in there. I still want some areas darker back here, and this little shaker thingy needs a lot of development, but I think I need it dry to get that to work. Uh, the picture is coming along, the fruits are definitely coming along. Um, I'm just not feeling like doing the grapes right now. Uh, the knife's turning out pretty cool. The coffee cup and this little Japanese tea uh, cup still needs a lot of work. Um, this whole background I'm, I'm, I'm liking, but it's still not quite what I want. But uh, you can kind of feel the table and, and all that stuff. So I think it's definitely coming along in a good sort of way. Um, the peach, definitely feeling the peach. Um, but uh, I think it's at a point where I need to put it away. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I will finish this up in a new video. So if you want to see the end of this still live, 
why don't you hit that subscribe button um, helps me out a lot uh, don't forget to like if you like this and